Every journey is like turning a page of the book of the world, and every page has its beauty, its wisdom and its sorrow. But some pages carry a light that fills their wisdom and turns their sorrow into truth. Why does Christianity have a bad name today? hypocrisy and bigotry of Christians. The hypocrisy and bigotry that we have is, first of all, to think that we have a special righteousness or holiness as Christians automatically simply because we're Christians without any kind of real sincere work to transform our hearts and to transform our inner person, to transform our being so that we come into an accord with the moral imperatives of Jesus Christ rather than with the moral laws which people have superimposed on Christ. In Vancouver. Can you tell in Nu știu încă. Trebuie să faci mâna. Sunteți catolici? Nu, no, ortodox. Ortodox. When I come to Romania, I feel welcomed like I'm coming home. Its beauty and simplicity are enchanting. Coming here often feels like a journey back in time. But as one of the newest members of the European Union, Romania is a land of changes. Shopping malls are replacing markets, and traffic jams are replacing the horse and cart. But Orthodox Christianity keeps its traditions alive here much as it has since Romania was converted to Christianity by the Apostle Andrew in the first century. I've come to explore this ancient Christian world, to look into the roots of the Christian faith. I want to know what a Christian life means, if there still are saints and mystics in this modern time, and what light I might capture in my own soul if I meet one. My journey starts in Bucharest. It was once called the Paris of the East for its buildings, boulevards and culture, but it was heavily scarred by the communist era. I've come here to talk to people who can shed light on the spirituality of the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church is the place where people are, are coming in order to meet uh, our Lord and to change their life and after that to, to arise and to live with, uh, with in a spiritual life, to live with our, our God and uh, with the saints to live in his kingdom, the heavenly kingdom. I wonder how religion can actually help us to change ourselves. 
because I know that many people go to church every Sunday and say their prayers every day, but only very, very few really get to know God and become saints. The word religion comes from the Latin religare, which means to relink, to relink the soul of the individual to God. When we look into the world of religion, we have to make difference between the social institution and the path of the individual, which is searching for its inner essence for its inner light. We can see the spiritual aspect of the religion through the transformation of the individual. Uh, we can see that he is better, we can see that he is uh, more enlightened, he understands from a different perspective life, then we are certain that its inner pursuit had some effects. You see, we have, there's only one nature of all mankind. We all share in the same human nature. So everything that one of us does affects the whole. Like dropping a pebble into the water till the ripples move out to the edge of it. When St. Anthony the Great went into the desert, he was struggling for all of mankind, not just for himself, because he understood that if he struggled and there was less darkness in him, there would be less darkness in the whole of the human nature. And to the degree that he acquired the light, there would be more light in the human nature itself. I'm starting to see how Christianity is actually a spiritual path. When I was 14, I started to ask myself questions about who I am and why I'm here. But at that time, Christianity was just a neon cross in the sky next to the mall that I passed on my way to school. But here, I can feel that Christianity really gives people their perspective on their place in the universe. To me, it's interesting to see uh, Orthodox culture, which is one of the reasons why I came here in the first place. You know, on the streets, people will cross themselves when they walk in front of a church. Um, there's always a possibility. You know, you, you, you know, you, sometimes you hear rumors of, of, you know, some holy monk tucked away in the hills somewhere, and, you know, there's always a possibility you might meet someone like this or might be able to go meet someone like that. And to me it's also been very interesting to see, you know, what mark communism and, and communist oppression has left in a culture, in a society, in people. The communist period in Romania was from 1947 to 1989, and it was a time of heavy religious and spiritual suppression. But it seems that the people's faith stood up better to communism than it is to capitalism now. In the 60s and 70s of America, when they were referring to the communists as the godless commies, or the godless communists, because of this religious suppression. Yeah. But what I think is interesting these days is how actually, and it's the, re the reason for my, my journey here, there's a, somehow a huge wave of atheism in the West now. So why do you think that is that we have this basically modern atheism? One thing that I think I've noticed here, being in Romania, um, on a real practical level, is that capitalism and communism are both the two materialistic cultures. How capitalism came to be 